Now, let's continue with today's stuff. So, we were speaking about improving the pieces. Don't remember, I mean, don't forget that sometimes we can also use pawns and other pieces in order to help our pieces, okay? So, it's not about just moving one piece uh, the whole time. Uh, very often, we will do it like in a combined way. So, here is our next example. I think this will be very simple for you. I think this will be the easiest one, but, but okay. We'll have a look. Uh, let me see. I have a slight problem with the format. Uh, what should I do in that case? Well, probably I should remove all the comments. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'll try to copy and paste again. By the way, this great platform, Chessable. Uh, a lot of uh, features, nice features in this class Chessable classroom. Great resource for online learning. All right, here we go. You play with the white pieces. I'll give you for this mission one minute and 30, okay, 30 seconds. So that's it, guys. Here we go. Try to find the best way to go with white. Yeah, today's subject, improving the pieces, okay? Today's, I'll write it down for you. Today's, today's subject, improving the pieces. All right, Egmo, you got it, nice. <laughs> Maybe I should mute most people here. Let's see if I can do that. Mute all. Okay, it seems everybody's muted. Aha, okay, Sprite Paul, Subham, Royale, XB, you got it. Nice, yeah. Greg Shahid, excellent, Greg. Uh, fifth place in this one. Chess Ryu, sixth place. All right. This is, by the way, a game between Christiansen, I mean, the US Grandmaster. Christiansen against Lotier. Uh, these were very strong players back in the, yeah, Larry Christiansen, yeah, back in 1991 is this game. I usually bring up uh, more recent games, but I like this one oh, from the good old times, 1991. Uh -huh. No, I don't, uh, I won't unblock the, unblock the chat. Uh, I want you to focus on, on the content only. Okay, Hong Pao, you got it also. And a lot of people have another idea here. We will speak about that as well. All right, so let's see here. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice, but there are so many moves, I'm afraid I won't be able to cover all of them. There are so many uh, suggestions here. Let's uh, no, it's not that Christiansen uh, Rayo. It's uh, Larry Christiansen, the U.S. Grandmaster. There is also a Norwegian Grandmaster, uh, Johan Sebastian Christiansen. But he was speaking about Larry Christiansen. I don't think that the Norwegian Grandmaster was even born when uh, this game was played. So let's uh, listen to Egmo. Egmo, you were the first one here. Please uh, share with us what have you found. I don't hear anything from Egmo. What happened, Egmo? I'm giving you the white pawn. No reply. I hope it's not on my side, though. So maybe we should... Okay, Egmo is playing, but he's not speaking. Uh, I would like you to participate speaking also. Maybe I should ask uh, Sprite Paul instead. No, I can't hear you. Okay, you're trying, Egmo. I can't hear you, Egmo. Egmo was muted. No, but he can unmute himself. I'm not uh, muting anybody here. Should we wait for Egmo or should I ask somebody else? Um, no, I cannot hear you, Egmo. Yeah, you wrong microphone, Egmo, I think. Well, uh, I can do it, says, says Ryu. Yeah, but you were in seventh place here or sixth place. So Sprite Ball was number two. Okay, Sprite Ball. Uh, I hope you can talk. Hello? Yeah, sure. P please, uh, please go ahead, Sprite Ball. Okay, so. Uh, here, white plays knight d2. All right. With the intention of knight b1 and knight c3, and then maybe knight b5. Excellent. And I mean, it's not only about reaching b5, right? It's also that yeah. once c3. the knight is on c3. And put pressure on the d5 pawn. Exactly. We we'll put pressure on the d5 pawn. But in a way, you're completely right, because in this structure, sometimes I guess this plan would fail if black would be able to play something like b5 before. But they're not, since the structure was already fixed in this way. So that's why this is such a strong move. 
Yeah, and also Egmo says the bishop on G2 becomes improved. Yeah, of course, whenever you move away the knight, I suppose your bishop is also getting better. So let's see here, um, um, Sprite Paul. Let's let's continue. I'll, I'll give you the pawn again. Let's, let's see if you can just uh, figure out the whole course here of the game. No, not the whole game, but what's happened in the game. Queen B4 was played. All right. Okay. Well, now the knight continues, knight B1. Sure. Black, notice the, the problems upcoming here, so they played B5. Oh, um, I don't think we dotted this in the exercise. Sorry? I don't think we reached this position in the exercise, like the puzzle. No, no, we didn't. No, you're completely right. Oh, okay. I'm just asking out of curiosity if you're able to continue. All right. Um, I mean, maybe knight c3. Yeah, I think that's possible. They didn't play knight c3. I guess one reason is that they wanted to... Well... Good point. I mean, they, they noticed that they wanted to stay with the knight here, so they didn't want to get distracted, like taking on a4. But I think your choice is also fine. In the game, they took immediately, so as to, to win the tempo here with the knight. Black stayed there with the queen. And what do you think would be the next step here, sprite ball, if, with the white pieces? I mean, the pawn is, is defended, right? But it's nice to have the, both these pieces tied up to the defense of that pawn. But maybe you should kind of create a new front here. You're right, L008. Egma also found it. Aha. It's time to look for a new weakness, like, you know, endgame strategy. So maybe rook a1, because... Exactly. Not dead. You're right. Nice. Rook a1. That's what happened in the game. Because, I mean, when black played b5, also they cleared the a5 for us. And it's much easier for us to attack their pawn than for them to attack our pawn, so to speak. So after bishop c6, rook a3, white later on, I think they played rook da1 and they got a better game. And actually black won this game in the end. But it's safe to say that uh, white is, is better here. They have a nice position, they're not winning, but they have something to, to work on, definitely. There are two uh, weaknesses here to work on. All right, so great. This is, uh, thanks, uh, Sprite ball, great work. This is what uh, this is about here. We would like to improve this knight. Some people are saying knight e5. I mean, that's a typical move here, but if I play f6, uh, what was your intention with this knight? Or it was some kind of pr provocation, maybe? Um, I'm not sure, but I guess you would have to go back with the knight, right? And Maybe it's not so bad for black, after all, to play f6. I know it's weakening, but also we take away the square on e5. So maybe black can play something like bishop c6. I don't know if, if it's... Likely for them to work a little on the queen side. Um, another move which people were proposing here was to move b3. And I thought this was very interesting because very often this can be a good idea, actually, in this structure. You try to get rid of black's space advantage on the queen side. I don't know how this would work here. I mean, I would definitely look at c3 um, and then protect the pawn. I mean, I can protect it with several pieces. So I don't know how convincing is this really for, for white. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that what uh, they played in the game was, was the best choice. Like uh, Sprite Paul was saying, the knight has a very nice destiny on d2. c3 is a perfect place. It should go to get that. It should go from d2. And then we bring in the knight. And no matter what happens here, uh, for sure, we have improved our position. I mean, black could also play something more solid, like, like bishop c6 maybe. But still, we'll play knight b1. They can come here if they like. We'll play knight c3. And who knows? later what we will do here. I mean, there are different ideas. Even e4 comes to mind, no? If we can get some tactical pressure there. Or I, I don't know. Uh, what else could we play? Maybe f4, bishop f3, and queen g2? Is that possible? Well, we will see. But that's not important right now. The important thing is to have improved our position and tying up black's pieces to the defense of their weakness. All right. Uh, I don't know. Is there any other comment, any other move that somebody wanted to look at? I know queen f5 was also proposed. Uh, I guess that's also possible, but um, I'm not convinced that it's so so useful here. Maybe black can some play something like like f6 and perhaps even put the bishop on c8 and harass the queen. I don't know. Um, Elsa, just continue with the next uh, example. All right, I don't hear any any other opinions here, so I'll continue. Let's see here. Let's bring up something from the last. FIDE Online Olympiad. This is a very interesting game, and uh, it was played at a very interesting moment. So you're playing here with the white pieces. I would like you to send me, uh, I mean, you will play out here, I think it's the first move, and then a few more moves. We'll see. Um, let's see here. How many moves will I ask you for on this one? 
Um, yeah, I guess I'll ask you for three moves. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'll tell you about the game. Let me just get this, get it started. Okay, two minutes. Try to find the best plan for white here. What game? Yeah, this is in the women Olympiad. Divya from India with white and Shuvalova from Russia with black. This is the game. And it's the game which was uh, disconnected, I think. They were playing and suddenly the game was disconnected uh, in the match between India and Russia in the online Olympiad last year. So this was a very, very, um, how can I say, famous game because uh, there was an internet problem in this game, unfortunately. All right, so please remember, guys, that today we're speaking about strategy, not so much tactics. All right. So we're speaking about the game in the women Olympiad last year. Divya with white and Shuvalova playing black. Oh, Egmo, I think you got this game. <laughs> you know about this game. But why do you need to say that then? Oh. <laughs> Else, I don't see any right answers here. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, you're close. Google Chess Royale, Tactical Magician. You're very close, but I think there is a way in which I can prevent your plan. I think I can prevent that plan. You have to perform it in a better way. Okay, Sprite Ball, you got it again. <laughs> nice. Subham, okay, good work. We have two winners here. I can see that both uh, Sprite Paul and Subham, they took some more time in order to find the right way, and that's uh, that helped them a lot to think a little more. So, Subham, I'll invite you to tell all of us what is this about, uh, how to play with white here. Please uh, share with us, uh, Subham. I don't hear anything. Oh, you played already. All right, let's see. But I, I can't hear you. In the game, they played the move 97 here. D4, 97. And Bishop F1, exactly. Click on that mute. No, I... Uh, Subham, no, no microphone, says Subham. But guys, you have to fix your microphone before entering, because else, how can we communicate? Uh, all right, uh, what to do? Let's listen to Sprite Paul then. I'll invite Sprite Paul again, because I know Sprite Paul can talk. So, uh, what was your idea here, Sprite Paul? What's going on here? If I play C4, what will you play? All right, so the idea is that the bishops are not the piece here, so we want to reroute the bishop to the B1, H7 diagonal. Uh, now we can go to D3, but we can go to C2, so bishop. Exactly. E2. You're completely right. That's That's exactly how the game went. So, I mean, once you see this picture, it's very easy to understand it. It's just like you're saying. We have our bishop sitting on this diagonal. I mean, it, it was good once upon a time, but not that's good any, anymore. I mean, this is a typical king's Indian attack, right? Uh, White is going for an attack on the king's side. This bishop is usually waiting. Sometimes you can play c4 to open up the e4 square, but that doesn't seem to be very likely here. So in the game, White noticed that they have to bring the bishop to this diagonal. And for that reason, we must play first d4. Because what's the difference here, Sprite Ball, if we play bishop f1 straight away? What do you think? I can give you the black pawn now. Uh, what do you think uh, black would uh, play here, if it's black to play? OK, can so uh -huh. here black has the option of maybe playing d4, uh -huh. blocking the bishop. Exactly. B blocking the bishop, and not only that, right? They're also improving. Their bishop, I would Their say. Their own bishop, yeah. Their own bishop, exactly. So now black might have some counterplay on the long diagonal. It won't be that easy for white to continue their attack. And uh, yeah, so I mean, basically, that's it. If you like, we can first look at what happened in the game. Uh, yeah, Divya played d4 in the game. After 97, there was bishop f1 trying to get to d3. Black Shuvalova didn't let that happen. And here we have uh, Sprite Ball's move here, bishop e2. And no matter what black plays, uh, you can bet that the bishop will come to this diagonal and then black's king will be in huge trouble. They play knight 
e7, that was bishop d1, knight f5, a smart way of trying to block white's attack. However, after bishop c2, uh, black is kind of out of fuel here. I mean, white can always go back with the knight and then play g4, right? So I don't know exactly how to progress here with black, what to do with black. In the game, they played rook a6. And here, of course, Stockfish found knight takes h6 and g takes h6 and g4. So this didn't uh, happen in the game because white played it in a very safe way. You, you remember this Olympiad was like five, 15 minutes plus 10 or something like that. So king g2 was played. And after queen c8, rook h1, white is bringing, bringing all the pieces to the attack. And after king g8, here we have a sad moment in this game because white lost due to uh, disconnection. Uh, they lost the connection on the internet. Uh, so white lost here, very unfortunate, because after knight gh2, going back with the knight, going for g4, you can bet that the white attack would be extremely strong. Yeah, I mean, it's not so difficult to, to understand this. White has so many pieces in the attack. They haven't sacrificed yet, but they will soon be considering to... I mean, I would just play something like g4, h5, g5, and bring the rook to g1. Maybe you can put the bishop on b1 and the queen to c2 and so on. Uh, also look at the structure on the queens. <laughs> I mean... Normally, black would have some counterplay with b4, but that's impossible. So, yeah, this was a very dramatic game, safe to say. Very dramatic game. If we go back to the beginning, we can see again that the bishop would like to improve. Uh, it's not so easy to use this typical plan with c4, because black has a lot of pieces controlling c4. So, um, yeah, d4 is the right move here. What else? If they take on d4, actually, it's interesting that now we speak about this diagonal for the bishop. But here, actually, we can use this diagonal with the queen. Now we can play like some people were saying here. Bishop takes h6, and after g takes h6, knight f6, check. And as you can see, next turn, queen d3 is killing here. If, if king... Well, it doesn't matter really, does it? King g7, I'll play queen d3, and I think I'm... You have to play something like bishop c5 so that the king can, can escape, but then I can just take on d4. So I think I guess that's why also you have to play this way. Um, knight e5 says Wacky Hill. When is that? Oh, here you mean knight knight takes e5. Oh, interesting. I didn't think of that. Well, I could always give check right if I like, and I can pick up your knight next turn. But I don't know if I have something better. Maybe I don't. Okay, maybe I don't. You're right. Maybe that's better. Aha, knight knight e5. Then. In any case, I think this explains also. Some people were saying here. Bishop takes h6, um, and I guess your plan was to go knight f6 check. But I'm not sure that you will mate me here, will you? If I play king h8, you would have to play d4 now, right, to, to bring in the queen. But I, I have one tempo, so I could play probably bishop g7. Please correct me if I'm missing something here. But I mean, if you play queen c2, I can take, and I guess I'm just in time to to remove that pawn from the board, right? When do you want to play knight h2, Wacky Hill? Um, I don't follow. Knight h2 now. When is that? After bishop g7. Uh, okay, I'll give you the pawn so you can do this yourself. Um, when when do you want to play knight h2? All right. But you, okay, d4. And what did I play last time? Bishop g7. Knight h2. All right, all right. I understand. I, if I take here, there will be a problem with queen takes h6. So what if I bring in the other knight then? Or maybe knight e7. Let's play Petrosian style here. Let's bring the knight to f5. Just try to disrupt your attack. Or knight e7, says Henry Arsold. Yeah, maybe. Maybe knight ninety seven also. I was thinking about this. I don't know what you guys think. But I thought this was a safe way of of complicating white's attack. So... To be honest, uh, guys, I think what she did in the game was the right way to go. I think this was pretty much the best way to play. Also, you don't need to calculate a lot of variations. I don't remember how much time did she have on the clock. But the plan as, as such, it's extremely practical, right? It's very nice to bring that bishop to, the, to this diagonal. So, yeah, that's uh, what I think is the solution here. So, very nice uh, play by, by uh, Indian player uh, Divya. A pity that uh, she lost her internet connection. Oh, that's a complete nightmare. I know how it feels. And uh, let's continue. Let's have a look at another example. Let's go back in time. We'll go back now to 1987. This is a game between with white pieces Pinter and playing black is Nikolic. 
Um, maybe you know about these guys. Nikolic, a strong uh, grandmaster from, from Bosnia. Very, very strong in technical positions. And this is the position that we will look at now. So you're playing with the black pieces. You can see that white is fairly active here in this position. I would like to know which do you think is the best way to go with black here. All right. I'll ask you for two moves on this one. So here we go. Old game. And very interesting play by Grandmaster Nikolic. Pinter versus Nikolic. This game was played in 1987. Careful with that pawn, uh, Aditea. You're blundering a pawn, I think, in the center. Okay, Charles Hua, you got it. Nice. Maybe you have seen it before, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, it's great that you remember it in that case. Okay, Wacky Hill, you got it. Good work. Adi Chess, uh, it's possible, but you will lose a pawn, and also I get access to the C6 square. Blue Ocean, you're hanging a pawn. Okay, Mega Charts Rex, you got it. Nice, we have three winners so far. Excellent. Kugel Chess, all right, I understand your move, but... Um, Maybe I can also use that same piece. I mean, the white counterpart. Okay, tactical magician, pawn sacrifice. All of you want to play like that. And if I use the knight there? If I try to enter with my knight? That doesn't bother you? A kugel chest, tactical magician, and pawn sacrifice? You're leaving a weakness there, maybe? What else? Uh, Sprite ball, Hong Pao, you're inviting me to play... Knight b5? Or then you will play bishop b8? Okay, I understand. It's, it's possible. Egmo, interesting move. What would happen there? We have a lot to talk about here. <laughs> Let's see if we can look at all these moves. So many moves. Don't play that, the human person. You're hanging a whole piece now. My knight will go to c6. Don't do that. All right, time's up. No time. Yeah, very little time. Okay, Greg Shahade also got it. Nice. Nice work. So, let's uh, listen to Charles uh, Hua. Charles, you're on. What do you play with black here? Uh, can you hear me? Sure, sure. Please go ahead. I want A5. Aha, what's the point of A5? Uh, I want to go Rook A6 and then bring on my Rook. Wow, that's a strange way of improving your Rook. So, why do you think that is such a good idea here in this case? Uh, I just feel like none of the pieces are really doing anything. But, uh, like I want right. to have stuff on the queen side, and that sure, like, sure. I can bring the rook around with an easy way. I mean, the the typical way to play here would be something like bishop e6 and try to put the rook on c8, but we can't. I mean, we could, but we're hanging the pawn. And also, if we... I mean, some people are saying like this, you can play rook b8 here. But, I mean, white can perhaps take this pawn, and there is something with knight c6 also coming up. So, tactically, this is not a good idea. It's much better to play like, like Charles is saying, with uh, a5. Okay, Charles, let's go back to you again. Uh, let's see what happened in the game. White played in the game a3, and uh, what was your move, sorry? Uh, rook a6. Exactly. So, now we play rook a6, and as you can see, the rook is ready to perform several tasks along the 6th rank. I mean, typically, to play rook b6, but also in some case, who knows, maybe it can settle on e6 if it's needed to work on the e-file and so on. And also it leaves kind of white without a clear plan here uh, in, in this position. In the game, white played knight b5, and black hurried to play a4 in order to push away the white queen. And after queen c2, as we can see here, the knight has left the center. So what does that suggest, uh, Charles? What would you play with black now? Now that the white knight left c3. Uh, knight e4. Exactly. Now we can bring in the knight. I mean, this is a typical situation. You can find it in very many different openings. Once one knight leaves the center, another knight can enter. So knight e4 is very good because now we can also consider to take here at some moment if we would like to get rid of that, that bishop, I mean. So it's... Not so easy for white here anymore to prove something. Knight c7 was played in the game. Black played rook a5. Funny move in this way. We are protecting 
the pawn and also we're somehow limiting the knight. And here white made a huge mistake. They played here, uh, they should have played f3. This was the right way to go. And after knight takes, pawn takes, uh, Stockfish found this funny move, bishop c5. <laughs> funny, but uh, but it's very strong because now after pawn takes, queen takes, uh, yeah, black is basically out of the woods here. They can continue with normal development. However, in the game, white played knight c4. And this was not a good idea. So in the game, black uh, found a tactical shot here. Maybe we should do some tactics also. So I'll invite you to find here, all of you, white's, uh, I mean, black's best way of playing here. Uh, black will win the game here. If you look uh, carefully, you will win the game uh, by a little tactical trick here. So, okay, I'll give you just one minute for this uh, mission. Let's see if you can catch the, the nice tactic here. There is a funny tactic here. If you take there, Tori Chess, I think you'll, I'll take your rook. Right? Um, okay, you got a first move, uh, Guinea Pig in Aditea. What would I play then? Could I take and take on c4 maybe? Or take on c4 straight away? Or, or there is something happening to me? Okay, Charles, you're very close. You're very close on this one. Extremely close. I guess in that case, Charles, I could play knight e3, don't you think? Oh, this was perhaps very confusing. Oh, everybody wants to play bishop d6 there. Oh, I see. Yeah, Blue Ocean, you're also very close. Rex Shahid, we have a winner, nice. I knew that for this kind of task, we needed a very, very strong player and he's here with us. So please, please Greg, uh, share with us. What would you play here with uh, black pieces? No microphone, but okay, you can play out the moves if you like. So Greg takes on c4, forcing me to take on e4. And here comes the key move. Yeah, I mean, the, the bishop has attacked, you will say. But it's important to play bishop g5. The big point is, of course, that now when I move my... Oh, 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 little mistake here uh, in the interface. Please give me a moment here. Rook takes... Sorry, Greg, uh, little tactic, tactical, technical mistake, I mean. Uh, you're on again. What exactly? Now we play f5, cheap tactics. That's what happened in the game. White had to find some, you know, desperate uh, solution here, 96. But Greg is not uh, getting confused here, of course. Right, Greg. No reason to get confused. That knight won't be able to to get back, right? Yeah, Nikolic was one of the world's strongest players back in those days. Very, very strong player. So, yeah, Greg, you're right. We, we can just take, and after knight takes, we don't need to take on d8, of course. White had prepared to go bishop c7, and who knows what will happen there. We can just go back for the rook. Yeah, very smart move. And... Uh, Somehow white is <coughs> not able to save this knight. Oh, you would say that you could take with the bishop. No, we cannot take with the bishop, right? Because we're hanging the other bishop. So I guess that's why Nicholas played here rook a8. But okay, we're speaking now tactics. Uh, the topic of today was strategy. But I thought it was an interesting little tactical detail. So if you go back to the position after rook a5, we can see that white has some troubles here. And knight c4 is just a losing mistake. Since after d takes e4, queen takes e4, we have this nice move, bishop d5, followed by f5, f4. Now, some people were saying bishop d6, but I didn't understand if I take on d6 and I take on c4. Does something bad happen to me here? The black rook looks trapped. How about take with the bishop? Uh, sorry, I, I lost uh, track here of the conversation. Take what with the bishop? I don't understand. Take with the bishop. What do you want to take with the bishop, Kugel chess? I don't follow. Or we speak about something else. Uh, please, Kugel chess, you can guide me. I don't know which color do you want, white or black? It was before. Okay, but I, I don't know. I, ca I cannot tell you exactly when it was. You would have to guide me. Okay. So I think this is actually okay for, for white if I 
if I take on d8. It was bishop takes d8, says Kugel says. Okay, I see what you mean. You're speaking about this variation in the game. Bishop g5. Uh, so white played rook takes e4. We had uh, Greg's move f5, knight e6. Let's see if I can bring this up. f takes e4, knight takes d8. And now you were saying bishop takes d8. I don't follow. If I take on c8, what, what's next? Okay, so it seems that white is okay here. But in the in the game, they didn't play bishop d6. They played this weird move. Or well, not so weird, maybe, but uh, not the most natural, perhaps. But black has noticed this nice trick coming up. Anyway, what we were looking at in the first place was how to improve the position with black. We were saying that white has evidently a lot of pressure. So I would say all of white's pieces are well, very well placed. I would suspect that black is white is better here. But actually, after the move a5, it seems that black is just fine. Somehow this bishop is strong on its initial position. The problem with this bishop on c8 is simply that the rook cannot get out. So that's what uh, we had explained here um, by, I think it was Charles. So that the rook should use, in this case, the third rank. In order to no, I don't think it's it's uh, equality. No, probably white is slightly better here still, but I mean that's not important. The important thing is to find the best move, right? And uh, I'm pretty sure this is the best way to go. I looked at some other moves also. Uh, for example, if you play here knight b5, we have the same situation. You can play here a4, and after queen d3, uh, you can play the, again the move knight e4. I had a look at this also. Uh, knight c7 appears to win a pawn here. However, after rook a5. It's not winning a pawn, right? Because once it falls on d5, we can also take on d4. And I think here probably black is better because, after all, we have the bishop pair. Now, what about all the other moves that people were saying here? Yeah, uh, bishop e6, we were saying that queen takes b7 was a bit uh, awkward. If a6, those of you who said a6, a lot of people said a6, I'm curious what you prepared against knight uh, a4. Please notice that in the game, had white played Knight a4, we can just go, I guess, rook a6 anyway, right? So we are still controlling the position here with our rook. I mean, knight c5, maybe I can go rook b6, right? But if you play a6, the first thing that you must check is what happens with knight a4. If you go b5, there will be issues with knight c6 at some moment. Um, I don't know. I mean, I didn't check this, but maybe I can play knight c6, and if you take, I can take back, and I can win a pawn. Do you think so? So, not so easy for, for black here. The knight is coming to, to b6. All right. So, probably the best choice is here what I played in the game, a5. Try to bring in the rook in this very smart way. All right. Let's move on. Let's see our next example. This is a game from two years ago. We have with the white pieces uh, Borsuk and playing black is Damjanovic. Let's see here if we can bring up this game. Here we are. It's an, as you can see, it's a King's Indian. Black has tactic change, but they're about to take back. I'll give you for this mission, I think only, what can it be? One, one minute and, and a half, maybe. One minute and a half. All right, let's see if we can solve this together. One minute and a half. Black to play and get some clear advantage. Borsuk versus Damljanovic. I don't think there is a reason to take on g2, guys. Uh, it's better to take that rook when white is about to unpin, don't you think? And remember that we're speaking about improving the pieces here, okay? Which piece will we try to improve this time? What do you think? Okay, interesting choice. <laughs> All pieces are improved here in your, in your solutions. But nobody's playing like the Grandmaster. Um, but Sprite Ball is very close. Yes, Sprite Ball, you're very close. Kugel Chase. Yeah, I'll give you half a point for that. Greg Shahid got it. Subham got it also. Kugel Chase, you're very, very close. I looked at, at your idea also. I looked at it because I thought it was so natural to play like that. Um, 
So let's see here. Time's up. Um, in the first place, you know, this is an attacking position, so we should, of course, uh, mainly look at how to work on the king side. So many people were saying the move knight d3. I, th I guess we will have to look into this move, right? But I would like to start with what happened in the game. And most people were trying to improve their knights here. Knight e3 was one suggestion here. Another uh, group of uh, people were saying knight d7 in order to improve that knight and so on. Um, what else could I say here? About, yeah, a lot of people are saying bishop takes d2, but don't do that because the rook is still pinned, right? Wait for me to play king g1 at least. I don't have anything else really to do here with, with the white pieces. So wait for me to, to move my king before you do it. King f7, some people are saying very romantic move to bring in the rook. Uh, interesting choice, definitely. Uh, something to consider here. King f7, also rook f7, a lot of moves. Yeah, I'm running out of uh, here of uh, so many different moves suggested. But uh, okay, we should listen to Sabha maybe. I don't remember. Did you have a microphone, Sabha, or you have no microphone? No microphone. I think we should ask uh, USES to to give you some discount on some microphone so that everybody has a microphone. It's important for these uh, lessons to be able to talk, uh, all of us, I think. So, yeah, that will be a future project. Anyway, you can move the pieces now, I hope, uh, Subham. Please go ahead. It doesn't work for me at Chessable. I think it will if you just switch the, somehow the configuration. Um, I don't think it's... It's a problem with chessable, really. It's something with the configuration, simply. But anyway, no problem with your move. That's exactly what the Grandmaster played. Queen d8. Please notice, we're speaking about an attacking position. Which piece could be better uh, used than the queen in order to attack here? So queen d8, very nice move in the game. White played king g1. Now it's time to take, of course. And queen e8, exactly. That's exactly how the game went. Damjanovic, uh, all his life, he has been a very strong player in the King's Indian. A lot of experience there. He immediately noticed that he has a queen on a5, but he can bring it very quickly to g6. Please notice that this is probably the only path that you can use. I mean, unless you use this path, but it's ridiculous to move the queen to a8, right? It's better, much more flexible to, to go to d8. So let's have a look very quickly on how the game uh, continued here. White played in the game queen h1 to bring in the queen to the defense. And after queen g6 check, king f1, black had different uh, choices here. In the game, they played knight e3, the move that, uh, that a lot of people were speaking about. But white found here the move queen g2, sacking the exchange, and the game was still highly unclear. However, even stronger was the move knight g4 straight away, because we would like to swap that bishop so that we can settle with a knight on d3. But I mean, the whole difficulty with this move is that white is able to take on e4 at some point. Not now, because there will be, I mean, after queen takes e4, we can take and it will hang on e3, right? However, after bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes e4. I guess this is why he shied away from, from this, uh, Damjanovic. However, after queen takes e4, knight takes, knight takes a2. You can see that probably black is winning. Now it's not about the white king anymore. Now it's simply about this a pawn, which should decide the game unless you can see some defense for white, but I can't. I mean, you will move the knight back, I guess, and you will run with the a pawn. So um, that's what could have happened in the game. In the game, they played queen d8, and white played king g1, and after take, take, queen e8. Here, white played queen h1, and here, like we were saying, after queen g6, king f1, very strong move would have been here knight g4. You can see it's a perfect place for the queen. We have a question here. Was it possible to go queen a5, c7, f5? But that's one tempo less. Right? No. Oh, you mean qu queen c7. Yeah, I looked at this move. But I noticed that there is, there is a difference here, I think. I'll play king g1, and after bishop takes, king takes. If you now play queen f7, what's the difference then? No, there, can, there cannot be any difference, right? I, between standing on f7 and on e8. The only difference is that the rook is not clear, but... Yeah, so probably you're right. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine to play... Uh, queen f7 then also. Yeah, you're right. But you know, I, chessable will only allow me one solution per position. So queen c7 followed by queen f7 should also work. Yeah, nice. You're right. So basically that's it. We would like to bring the queen to the attack. The queen is not doing anything really on a5 right now. I mean, some slight pressure on this diagonal, but 
What it's about not... the 93, 94 idea? Uh, yeah, we should, we should look at that. Yeah, I, I know. I, I was just trying to finish off the main variation. What about 93? Yeah, let's, uh, let's consider this. Well, first place, can I take? You'll take back, I guess. And I'll take with the king, or maybe I should play king g1 now. Maybe that's a good idea. If you take, I'll take back, and your queen is far away. Oh, sorry, you want to play knight g4? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. You want to play knight g4. So knight g4 is the choice here. We have a dreadful threat of bishop takes, knight takes e3, I mean. Um, I guess I'm unable to defend here, or is there some defense? If I just play king g1, what will happen to me then? Uh, what I what is oh you mean it's also hanging here but a lot of pieces pieces hanging right now <laughs> so I don't know what what would you play here uh, interesting I mean you could take on g two but then I I guess I could even take here or is this crazy you would have to play bishop f three I'll play queen g something queen where where to put the queen here maybe well I don't know queen g five I mean, careful, no? I, I also have a few threats here. Oh, queen g3, says Pikachu. Okay, okay, Pikachu. Queen g3 then. Yeah, probably that makes sense so that we can hit the bishop in some variation. I don't know. So you want to take here. I'll play bishop d4. You have to play rook f7, I guess. Uh, did I miss something here? The queen e6 check? When is that? No, oh, 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 sorry. I'm blind. Yeah, I'm blind. Definitely. Queen, I didn't see that check. All right, so it's game over, right? It's game over. Oh, I just picked. What about knight e3 instead of bishop g2? Sure, it was probably a bad choice from me. Knight takes e3. Now I can also sack here if I like. Is this does this make any sense to remove that uh, that bishop? I mean, it's a king's Indian bishop after all. So I'll take. I guess he'll take back. I'll take with the queen. Now I'm two pawns up. I don't know which king is the most exposed one. I guess I could go something like king h2 and rook g1 very soon. Queen d8. Now, like they say, never. How do you say? Never later. Never. No. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'll give check, right, so that I can control the queen, and then I'll play king h2. You like this for black? Are you convinced? I'm not convinced uh, anymore. Better late than never. Yeah. Thanks, Robo. That's what I was saying. Better late than never. Sorry. Thanks, uh, Ryo. Also. So I don't know. I'm not convinced by this. My impression is that black is attacking without the queen. And that's exactly what Damlianovic addressed in the game. He quickly brought the queen to the, to the attack, right? By, by queen d8. But okay, if you like, we can look at this again, knight e3. Like I'm saying, I'll take. And if you play knight e4, I'll play king d1. But, uh, but I'm pretty sure that uh, white is fine here. So. White is slightly better, says Google Chess. Uh -huh. I like black, says Tactical Magician. Yeah, maybe. Okay, you can check it and tell me next time what you think about this. And please don't forget to compare it with what happened in the game. Uh, you can look look up the game, no? It should be in the mega base. Uh, the move Queen d8 was played in the game. Queen c7 should be more or less the same thing. The important thing is simply to grasp the idea of bringing the queen to the attack. Again, we have to do this again, really? Some people want to do the quiz again. Okay, but then I will do it just like 20 seconds, something like that. Because else we're losing time on... Uh, well, we, anyway, we're accessible, so it's good to, to repeat stuff. If we repeat, we will learn more. So here we go. In chessable style, let's see if we can repeat the whole variation here. Something like this. All right. All right, so basically everybody found it. That's uh, excellent news. Great. All right, I'll continue then. I'll bring up our next example, which I, I guess would be a little simpler. So congratulations to all of you who found this in only 20 seconds. That's great work. Here we go with our next example. We are playing here with the white pieces, I'll ask you for, I think two or three moves would be enough on this one. Well, let's see here. Let's see if I can get this right. Yeah, that should be enough. 
All right, I'll give you two minutes so that you can think about this carefully. Take your time, take your time, guys. Please, take your time. By the way, who is playing in this game? We have with white pieces, Abdul Satorov. Very strong Grandmaster. And Postny. Another strong Grandmaster and also very good at chess theory. Expert on openings. Oh, you bet Postny Ryu. Good for you. Congratulations. That's a very strong player. No, it's not one of uh, Ryu's game, I think. This is uh, Abdul Satorov playing white. Yeah, this game was played, I think, in Title Tuesday. Uh, so it's hard to keep track of all those Title Tuesday games, right? Okay, Guinea Pig, you got it. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it also depends on your opening repertoire, right? If you play the, the London, let's say, you will probably get into these positions more than if you play, like, E4 or so on. Okay. Royale, L, Charles, Pikachu, Robo, Giril. That's That makes a lot of sense, but... Uh, I guess we could improve that plan. Maybe we can improve this plan that you're suggesting. And the, the plan that we're seeing here, it has, a, has an old uh, history. I saw this once in another USCS uh, lesson. I saw this, exam this plan, but with the black pieces. I saw this game, I think it was Benko versus Petrosian, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Benko versus Petrosian, you could look it up. Uh, the same idea with reversed colors. I hope I'm not make mistaken here. Benko versus Petrosian. Or was it some Svesnikov game? Maybe it was Svesnikov. Maybe it was a, maybe it was a, okay, maybe it was a Svesnikov game. I can of course look it up. Um, All right, Guinea Pig and Medina Tiger, you are the winners here. So, um, Medina Tiger, if you like, uh, you can uh, share with us uh, what to play with white here. What do you think Abdul Satorov played? Oh, I see Greg. Yeah, Greg got the, I, I understand. Greg was very close. He got the first two moves. Aha. I don't have a microphone. Wow, like, Greg, we have to solve this somehow. The USCS students, they don't have a microphone. How can we perform these uh, sessions in, the, in a proper way then? Guinea Pig, I'll give you the, the move and uh, please uh, talk. Okay. Well, basically the first move I considered was F4, but black gets counterplayed by playing like B4. Sure. So therefore, we can block A, and C5 is also a weak square, so we can stop uh, B4 and control the C5 square by playing B4. And if I go A5? Then we just... Exactly. Aha. Uh -huh. That's how the game went. Black played rooks FC8. I mean, it was a title Tuesday, so they played with like three minutes, but still, I, I liked this game. Okay, please continue, Guinea Pig. So here, now we need to get into the C5 square, uh -huh. B3. Exactly. Black noticed that probably there is something hanging here, so they played a4, and, and yeah, the rest is, and the knight is there. And I mean, now we can continue the attack. Some people wanted to play for an attack here. They wanted to play like rook e3 and so on, which makes a lot of sense. However, uh, first, uh, it makes sense to, like you say, to limit Black's counterplay on the queen side. So, very, very nice uh, plan. What's, th thanks, uh, good work, Guinea Pig. What's wrong with knight... B3 of move one says L008. Well, I guess the problem is that they will play before. Or am I mistaken? So you can play like knight c5. I don't know if there is any concrete threat, but I could perhaps take, and uh, you can take back. And I don't know if I could even, I don't know. It's, this is too risky, maybe. Yeah, probably it's too risky. So I, I guess here, uh, st um, he would play, I mean, black, who was black? Posny, who would play maybe rook c8 here? Is that possible? Or am I hanging something? Some tactic somewhere? Oh, I'm, I'm hanging a tactic, right? You can play something like Bishop takes h7 here. Okay, okay. I, I shouldn't uh, allow this, of course. Sorry. So, what else? I could play maybe something like rook d8, then? Right? Or is it, is it... No, that's a very silly thing to say. You can just take anyway. I'm sorry. My tactics are not working properly. So, what would I play with black here? I would have to move the bishop then, I guess. Bishop... 
Yeah, he ate. It was not my intention. But uh, H6 says Medina Tiger. Okay, maybe H6 then. Yeah, yeah, sure. To, to, uh, to avoid that uh, trap. Yeah, you're right. Good point. I have and, a question. I mean, uh, sorry? Uh, after A5, A3, what if A4 for black? Yeah, that's a good question. I also thought about that. So we play B4 here to prepare knight B3. After A5, A3, why didn't black play A4? I mean, now, as you are probably trying to say, I cannot use this square for my knight anymore. But I can think of two plans for white. But the most uh, interesting, perhaps, would be to put the bishop, let's say, on, on F1. And you cannot take. So you can play whatever you like. And, and I'll play knight D3 anyway. And then I'll play knight c5. Or uh -huh. maybe there is something something better than this. But I like this for white. And I'm, I think that these pawns might be an issue later on for uh, for black. And I mean, if we po post this knight on c5, perhaps the other knight can later on go to e5. So we are kind of changing the the papers here. Oh, you're saying Pikachu says bishop e8. OK, I see what you mean, to bring over the knight. Yeah, but I mean, you, you can always copy me. I, I see what you mean. You can copy me like this, but I can always take, of course. And uh, you can't do the same thing in the same way. I mean, somehow with the structure, I mean, I hope you see what I mean. I think like Carson in this position, he will play something like h4. Now it's time to work on the king side with so many black pieces on the queen side. And this is might be a good plan to play something like h5. We'll play for an attack. Aha, knight c4. But I don't have to take. I, I, I'm not going to take now. I'll play something like queen c2, maybe. I'll put my bishop on d3. I mean, I would just say that this structure, as such, is not advisable for black. It's not advisable, because they're left without any counterplay. Black's counterplay here would be to play something like f6 and e5. But it's not so easy to bring about, because white is also pressing on the e-file. So um, I think the verdict is that uh, he did the right thing here, Abdus Satorov. It was a three-minute game, I guess, uh, title Tuesday. Uh, knight b3 was very natural to put the knight on c5, but it would give black some counterplay along the B file, like it's typical, no? The minority attack we're seeing here, right? The typical minority attack. Oh, three plus one. Okay, right. But if we start with B four, it's a different story. It's much more difficult for Black now to to create counterplay. And of course, somehow they are also suffering since they're sitting with a dark, with a light squad bishop. Um, but I mean, this whole idea is good to know that you can very often use it with the Black pieces in the same kind of situation. Oh, I was going to look up that example. I showed you that example once. Um, the, the Sveshnikov example, I showed you once. Uh, by the way, he passed away if, uh, a few days ago, Evgeny Sveshnikov, one of the greatest, uh, how can I say, opening experts of all time. He designed the whole Sicilian system. That's incredible. But he had a game in the Queen's Gambit where he affected this plan. I think it's like a model game. If I have time, I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, so, summing up, B4, key plan here, try to bring your knight to the very juicy square on c5. If they don't let you, well, it's a good thing that we have another knight that we can use. I don't know if this is the right place or that is the right place. Uh, if you tell me that this is a better place, I'll believe you. Um, but the important thing is that we vacate the d3 square so that our knight can come to c5. By the way, the d3 square, a very good place in the corresponding structure in general. So it's, it's good to have a knight there. All right, I think I should bring up another example while I'm thinking about this Sveshnikov example. So what if we look at another game by Anish Giri? We had a game by Giri some time ago, Giri versus Firuza, I remember that we looked at. And here I would like to show you another game by Giri. We have Giri with white and a Spanish a very strong grandmaster, David Anton, with the black pieces. So here we have an Italian game. I'll ask you for the first, let's see how many moves we will look at here together. Um, Let's see. Maybe some of you know this example. I'm happy for you if you know this example. I'll ask you just for the first two moves. All right. Uh, why to play? Try to find... Oh, Ryo, you got it in just five seconds. Yeah, yeah, it's in Italian. Okay. While you're thinking, I'll see if I can bring up the Sveshnikov game. Uh, let's see. If I have it somewhere. It's a very, very nice game by Sveshnikov. Aha, here it is. Yeah, OK, this will be our next uh, example then. OK, Chesrayo, L008, Charles Hua, you all got it. Nice. Knight, oh, interesting move. Knight maneuver, some people are saying here. Some people want to strike in the center. That's also reasonable. But please remember that our queenside pieces are not developed. 
yeah, that night maneuver is typical. Okay, a lot of different ideas here. Chess Ryu, L008, Charles Fua, and Mega Charles Rex, you got it. Um, so, Ryu, I guess uh, you will speak on this one, but let's see if we can give all the people a chance to find it. Which piece are we speaking about? Try to figure out which piece uh, could be improved in a surprising way. Actually, we saw th something very similar just a few examples ago uh, by Nikolic. Uh, Blue Ocean, you got it also. Nice. So today we're speaking a little more about the usage of ranks, right? Usage of ranks. Oh, very nice uh, night maneuver. Yeah, we have two different night maneuvers here, which people are also suggesting. I think I, w I have an idea about what Anton might have played in that case. But okay, I'm not an expert on the Italian, but I think if you leave the center with your knight, I might be able to uh, fight for the center with my knight. Pikachu, you got it. Jelly Bean, 967, you got it also. So a lot of people got it. That's great news. All right. This is a very uh, impressive game, by the way. It's a nice attacking game. So it's uh, actually connected to attacking play as well. All right, uh, Ryo, you're on. Please uh, share with us. What did uh, Giri play here? Oh, Ryo doesn't have a microphone either? I, I have it, I have it. Oh, you have. Nice, nice. Good news. OK, please shoot, uh, Ryo. This piece is the rock. Uh -huh. I mean, because this rook is good, this queen, okay, we can move later, the king sure. is safe, the, these knights can always move, the bishop can come with b3 or knight moves. The right. only piece that might not be that great is the rook. I mean, we can play b3, but that is a4 then. Sure, sure, b3, a4, yeah. So that's why I play a4. Uh-huh. Okay. I'll see what, uh, yeah, he played rook e8 in the game, Anton. And now, now, now uh, the opponent was a4 was, okay, not obviously not to weaken the squares. But the point is to move the rook here. Now we can play rook e3 or rook g3 or whatever. And I mean, also, then, the black knight, it, it cannot easily get there, right? It's not yeah. like they have a knight sitting on b8, which can go to b4, so it doesn't matter so much. Aha, rook a3. Well, uh, it, it, it also makes this bishop kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, like you're saying, you limit black's idea of a4. Aha. So please continue, Ryo, please continue, just to see the whole picture here. Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm you could play like that, but you're oh, blundering. I'm hanging up on. Yeah, don't do that. He did it later. Yeah, he did it like five moves later. Okay, Let's knight f1. Yeah, if you touch the knight, you're still leaving this pawn slightly loose. I don't know if I could play d5. That's what I wanted to discuss also with some of you. e5, knight e4. I don't know how this... Uh, what do you think about this, Ryo? About, I mean, I'm about to play c5 also, right? Oh, so then I, I some... play... yeah, maybe then I can play queen c2 to defend it. You could, but actually... Uh, Giri, he protected this pawn in a different way. <laughs> Think of Petrosian. You know this overprotection stuff that we're speaking about. Uh, they still use it nowadays. Don't think that uh, prophylaxis and all this is like uh, out of fashion. It's not like that. So, like you were saying in the very first place, uh, Ryo, White would like to play b3 and bishop b2 at some point, maybe. But not with the rook on a3. So oh, what to do? Okay, yeah, and exactly. So this is like, a, oh, you don't have the pawn, sorry. So it's like a multi-functional move, right? Rook e3, we overprotect our weakest spot. The, who is to play here, by the way? We enter, oh, we enter the variation. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so here we are. Rook a3, we overprotect this pawn. Please notice that while, while this knight is on d2, d5, I can always go e5. And that's not to Black's liking. So in the game, Anton played rook a b8. And now, obviously, the bishop is, is not so active anymore. So, what to do, Ryo? Yeah, you have it, a pawn again. Every time I make a white move, you lose the pawn, I'm sorry. B3, bishop a7 was played in the game, bishop e2. Exactly, look at this position. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a fantastic position. Nobody would guess that it is the rook. I mean, few people would guess that it's the rook, which went that way. You would think that it's perhaps they played rook e1, rook e3, queen c2, rook a1, and the queen got back. I don't know. But look how fantastic he has organized his pieces. B3 is protected, D4 is protected, E4 is protected. Like they say, once center is under your control, you can start attacking on the flanks. And that's exactly what Giri did now. So, please continue, Ryo. Let's do this quickly. Go for the attack, okay? Go for it. Yeah, because the golden rule, we have E4 protected. So if they play something like knight E4, I mean, I didn't analyze this, but I'm pretty sure you can just play something like knight E2 and you can pick up the pawn later. This looks, at least to me, it looks very 
interesting for right. Also, please notice that it's an attacking position. No, we're speaking about an attack. In the end, we will attack here. So in the game, Anton played knight e7. Now comes your move, um, Rayo. Now it's your move that we were speaking about. Now he played here knight h4. Exactly. Because in this way, we have several things coming up here. The pawn could advance at some point, but more likely uh, bring in the queen and the rook. I mean, both pieces were somehow obstructed by the white knight on f3. c5 was playing in the game. Black looks for counterplay, open up the game for this sleeping bishop. However, Giri just continues with attack. Rook g3, queen a6. You can guess the next move, uh, Rayo. Go for it. Another friend to the party. Yeah, okay, half a point. I think there is some some issues with uh, d3 and so on. I don't know. I didn't check this, but... Uh, well, maybe it's not necessary to enter this if you already have a very promising position. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe it's okay for you. But I would prefer... Okay, the, King f1 said tactical magician, but where is the magics, uh, tactical magician? Now I have the magics here. No, I'm just kidding. But it, it looks promising for black. Probably we should go to h2. So... And no, no pawns needed in this attack. No pawns needed. Bring more pieces to the attack. Anyone, what would you play with white? Yeah, you got it. L008 got it. Queen H5, of course. Oh, I lost the uh, connection for a, for a short while. Let me enter the ex example again. One moment, please. One moment. Let me enter this example again. It's We're about to finish. Uh, in any case, guys, we're about to finish. So... Um, Let's see again if I can bring up the example. Um, here we go. Let's see here. Um, all right, where were we? Uh, here, queen h5, right? Queen h5, threatening to take on h6. Black played king h1, bishop c1, bringing all the pieces to the attack, rook g8. Bring more pieces. Okay, Rayo, it's your move. Almost all the pieces are in the attack now. So what would you play, Rayo? Quickly. I cannot hear Rayo anymore. All Is right, it? Rayo. What is it? Yeah, and Sav have got it. Yeah, Pikachu says 94. Yeah, maybe 94 is also possible, but I'll stick to... Yes. Oh, I, I, I lost, a, lost a contact again. I don't know what's going on here. I lost the whole... Uh, some, something's happening with the chessable uh, platform. So, very quickly then, knight f3 was played in the game, white had a very strong attack, he took on h6 and he later on went on to win. Summing up what we have seen here, just like Ryo is saying, if you start with b3, they could go a4, and this rook is also a lit little passive. So it's much stronger if we play a4, we bring the rook to e3, and only after that we play bishop e3 and bishop e2. We have kind of complete control in this position, I think it's a very beautiful example on how you can coordinate your pieces, protect your pawns, and once you're in control of the center, that's the right moment to strike. Then you go for an attack. I mean, even if black hadn't played d5, I think that uh, here uh, Ryo's idea with knight h4 was, was very interesting and tried to continue an attack. And I mean, also he played he played it for something. Now he knew that at some point if, if white is able to play these two moves, d5 will come also, right? Uh, once the rook is out of, out of there. So I understand why Anton played d5. And speaking about d5, I mean, if we go back, some people were saying knight b1 to go knight c3. I think that d5 and knight e4 should be considered for black, followed by c5. And that in the same fashion, if you were considering knight f1, which is the typical Ray Lopez maneuver, please notice that I can again play d5 and I can play knight e4. I mean, in the Ray Lopez, you usually are sitting with the bishop on c2, right? Which controls this diagonal, but you don't have it here. So we should be a little careful about leaving uh, the pawn on e4 unat unattended. So that's why, I mean, this could be interesting for black. I mean, even in the case of white taking here, winning a pawn, I mean, I would play c5 here. You can take this pawn if you like, but now I'm, the position is open. I don't know, maybe I can play something like rook d8 and I can take this pawn. Well, I, I have this impression that this would be okay for, for black somehow. Or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe this is not so clear. But, but okay, I, I like the idea of taking, maybe bring the other pawn and so on. Um, it's a typical pattern, so much stronger what Giri played in the game. He started with the funny move a4. Exactly, this is uh, it's similar to what Nicholas did. He brought the rook to e3 in this very smart way, and then he played bishop b3 and bishop e2. So just in order to finish off today's work, I wanted to show you this example. We're speaking about Sveshnikov, a very great player who sadly passed away a few days ago. And uh, this is one of Sveshnikov's games. It's not in the Sveshnikov Sicilian, uh, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's uh, Queen's Gambit 
he was good at uh, many different openings. So I just wanted to show you this example very, very quickly because it's connected to something that we looked at today. So I'll give you the pawn here. Please, I mean, I, I'll give you the quiz here. Please see, please uh, make sure that you find the best way to play with, with the black pieces here, okay? Um, here we go. Okay, Henry Arsold and Aditya and L008. It's okay what you played also. Yeah, it's okay to play like that. It's just less flexible. Okay, Subham, Chesrayo, but it's less flexible. Medina Tiger and Hong Pao, you got it. That's the way the great Sveshnikov played it. Same idea, but please remember, guys, flexibility is important here. Flexibility. It's better to keep that white pawn on the board because you can attack it with a knight, right? There must be some value attached to that. So, um, I get the point, Giri. That's an interesting place for your knight also. Aha. Awesome, Owen. I think, I, I'm afraid that's not connected to the, to the position. Yeah, you can take the pawn, Mega Charles Rex. That's possible also. That's what you could have played, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Kugel says you got it, Pikachu. You got it also. Yeah, Sabham, you're right. That's the right uh, move order. So a lot of people want to take, and most probably you have the right idea coming up. However, please try to be flexible uh, in your play. Yeah, Girir, you're right. That's what you should have played. Exactly. Uh -huh. So it's the same topic that we saw in the game of Abdul Satorov when he was creating like a protected square for his knight and he was later able to profit from that. Aha, you got it, uh, Henry Ersor. That's what he played, Sveshnikov. I mean, we're speaking small details here. You could, of course, play in the other way as well. However, it's more powerful if you leave the white pawn on, on a3 because you can later on attack it. So, uh, all right. Let's uh, listen to, to Hong Pao on this one. Okay, Hong Pao, I hope you, hope you have a microphone. Uh, yeah, so um, it's... I'll give you the pawn. Okay, sorry. Please go it's ahead. The same idea as the previous one, just b5. And after white plays knight e2, um, then knight b6. Sure. But why do you think it's uh, important to keep the tension here? Why didn't they take on b4? I mean, because if you leave the white pawn on a3, then after knight c4, like um, knight takes a3 will always be a threat. So. Exactly, exactly. And that's probably what Sveshnikov was thinking. He played it, yeah, knight f4, they played queen c8, knight e3. Okay, so what did you say, Hong Pao? What was the idea here? Right, so just settle with the knight. This is very uncomfortable for white. Please notice that had we taken at some point, I mean, had we taken like this, I might be able to play something like, uh, let's say, rook c1 if I, if I like here, uh, some kind of prophylactics. However, if we leave the pawn there, evidently uh, we cannot do that because then uh, the pawn is, is, is falling. And also, I mean, white will never take on, on a5. Uh, here, for example, they will never take on a5 because they know that uh, all the, both these pawns will be weak. I mean, I can play even knight c4 if I like, and I'll probably get both pawns back. So it makes a lot of sense to keep the tension. A lot of people here were saying uh, a takes before, and you probably wanted to go b5 next turn, but still, it's not exactly the same thing. Uh, white has some slight more flexibility. I don't know if I could play, no, I cannot play rook e1. What would I play with white here? Maybe I could play knight e1 then? I don't know if this is better. I could play something like this. And uh, maybe then I can play rook a1. So maybe this is a way in which white could possibly improve. Uh, please notice, by the way, that white in this game, it's good to know also, Tistal was playing white. I can write here the names of the players. Tistal versus Sveshnikov. This game was played back in the 80s. This game is from 19... No, in the 70s. 1977 was played this game. Aha. So uh, this was a big mistake. B4 was a big mistake. Old game, yeah. Old but very useful game. One of the best examples you can find, in my opinion of this B5 idea in the Karlsbad structure. So B4 was a mistake. Tistal wanted to, Norwegian Grandmaster wanted to play B5, the minority tech, but he shouldn't have played that. He should have played something else. Maybe, I don't know, knight E3 or, or whatever, or maybe bring the rook, but it was a mistake. B5, it was very nicely punished by Sveshnikov. Knight E2, knight B6, knight F4, queen C8, knight E3, knight C4. Here, white played rook A1, sad move, and of course, black has no intention of taking for now. Knight E4, bringing in another knight also to the action after rook fc1, speaking about improving the pieces. Uh, what do you think, guys? Which piece should be improved now? Anyone. Should I ask you this one also? I, I will ask you. I will try my luck here. 
I'll give you for this mission only 30 seconds. Which piece could you improve? How can you improve it? Let's see if you, yeah, you got it, Henry Arsor. That's right. You found Svesnikov's move. Which piece should be improved? Tactical magician, you found it. Nice work, Sprite Paul, Subham, you all got it. You follow in Svesnikov's footsteps. That's completely right. We should always focus, well, almost always focus on our opponent's biggest weaknesses, right? Aha. Right, so uh, what, what was the idea here, Henry Arsold? You can play it out. You can tell us what to play with black here. Exactly. Rook e7, the rook is coming to a7, very smart maneuver in this way. After a4 was played by Tistal, rook a7, white was able to get rid of that weakness. a takes b5, c takes b5, b takes b5, rook takes b5. However, black now has a passed pawn, as you can see, and they have command of the a file, so black was clearly better and they went on to win this game. Very good work by Hong Pao and by Henry Arsold, who found this important idea. So, summing up, what we have seen in this example is, again, just like Abdus Satorov, he used this move b4 to bring the knight to c5. We have exactly the same idea here. Black played b5 in order to bring the knight to the very nice square on c4. So, as you can see here, sometimes our pawns can also help our pieces in order to improve. It was not the same thing playing knight b6 immediately. In that case, perhaps white can somehow stick to the plan of, I don't know, maybe I could play knight e2, and I will try to play later on at some point b5, uh, resuming my minority attack. So much stronger, Svetnikov's move, b5. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Thanks a lot for joining in, and see you next time.